All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to record this very short video for you to get you started on your week two Excel Lab one, which is organizing and displaying data. Now, the beautiful thing here is, is that you only need to select between 30 and 60 data values, depending on the size of your uh, data. And then also remember that the data must be quantitative and ratio level. If you recall, the difference between ratio and the other values is that ratio starts with zero, which indicates an absence of whatever substance or measurement you're taking, and, and then it goes to positive infinity. You're then going to provide a link of where you obtain this data. Okay, so all of these fractions that I'm reading to you right now are here. We are also then going to look at um, descriptive statistics relative to the data. And I'm going to show you how to do that with Excel. It should be accurate. And uh, we're going to also create a histogram using the proper number of classes. We're going to label the axes. And uh, we are then going to write a report discussing what we found, discussing all the information. Now, remember the report should be two to three paragraphs in length. I recommend the page to page and a half. That should be sufficient, and that includes your your data, your charts. Well, the data spread it's, itself should be its own page, maybe like an index page or an appendix if you wish. Call it Appendix A. And so, but the written part, the actual writing, the typing, the information part should be about a page and a half. And I would expect no less. I would also like to spiffy up your writing and maybe look into a um, any references you can think of and usually the train of thought is you would um, you would include one reference at least per page all right then we're going to also discuss um, if you have a frequency distribution table or histogram uh, we're, we are going to create that in Excel as well so here we go. So there, is, there are some sample materials for you. So you do have an Excel template you can use. They provide for you. And so if you just click on that, that'll pop open for you. Let's take a look. It takes a little bit to open up. But this is the, the information they want you to obtain, which is very basic information. You can get much more once I show you how to do this in, um, in Excel. All right, what else do they want you to use? A sample written a report to help you understand how to write this report. That's also provided to you to assist you in writing this. If you follow this information, it should see. You follow this information, very simple um, report. And if you follow that example, that should definitely get you where you need to be. And uh, let's see here, this is a sample Excel. Let's open that up and take a peek. Okay, and so this one actually contains the data. I may actually use this to, to explain to you how to do this. Now, I know that your next question is very likely going to be, where do I get the data from? So if you look in your module, I'm going to actually do this just like if I were you, a student, looking at this for the first time. Uh, what you're going to do is you are simply going to Go back to the module, and there you go. You see where it says resources for the Excel lab. So I'll show you what I did with one of the classes during one of the calls. You do have tutorials here that talk you how to do a histogram. If you'd like, we can look at one before I continue. And then these are um, different websites that hold various um, data points that might be of interest to you so you just take a peek and when you go in here just um, you know check out the different resources that you have 
And so take a look here. There's some more information. So you have lots of um, support, lots of data available to you. So like I said, I'm going to make my life easy and I'm just going to use this as the example. And so if you notice, I've got, it looks like 50, let's go with 51 data points. It looks like if I take away this line, remember you got to go from only the data. So yeah, 51 data points is what I have. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, get rid of that, is I want to go to my data tab. That's what you want to do too, by the way. You want to go to your data tab and you want to look over here on the extreme right hand corner and you should see this tab that says data analysis. Now, if you don't, no need to panic, follow these directions. If you do not have that data under data analysis tab under the data uh, tab, you're going to go to file. You're going to go down to options this window is going to pop up. You're then going to go to this on the left hand side where it says add-ins. Go ahead and click that. And then you want to select analysis tool pack. Now I am not going to do this, but once you select it, you're going to click on go. I'm going to, I'm going to go this far. This is about it. So you have this one checked off. I like to check these off as well, the first two, and hit OK. I am not going to do that part because I already have it, so I don't need to, to do that. All right, so we're going to go to Data Analysis. Then we're going to go directly to Descriptive Statistics. You're going to hit OK. Now in the area where it says input range, we're going to literally grab the array of data that's in my column B. Depends on where you place your data, so that's where you're going to highlight it. I did not use labels. If you notice, um, I left it alone, and this is a column. I do want to select the output range, which is where is the data going to show. So I'm just going to go ahead and click inside of here first and then click in J1 just so that the data is going to basically appear all around here. All right. Now, I want summary statistics and perhaps a confidence interval. Why not? And you're going to hit OK. So you'll notice all of the answers that they're asking for here are already populated here. Now, um, let's say you have uh, a Mac, which many students often tell me that in their Macs they have difficulty uh, completing the steps I just showed you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to go equals average for the mean inside the box where you want the answer. Double click on it and hold and drag your data. And there you go, hit enter. If you'll notice, the answers match 2.24, and there's your 2.24. Your median, you're gonna go equals MED for median, double click on median. Same thing again, hold and drag. All right, and then there's your data, hit enter, come back, and you'll notice that in the median we have 2.178 here. This rounded, so if I open this up, just FYI, go back to, uh, actually, no, let me go back to home. I'm going to open this up. Oh, actually, I closed it. See? Same thing. All right, and the mode. Now the mode is a trickier one of the two. So if I'm if I go to mode and I go equals mode, right? I'm gonna just double click on this. Same thing. I'm gonna hold and drag. There's a problem with the mode tab. I would not trust this if I were doing this. However, luckily enough, we do have the same number here. Standard deviation. 
obviously we have the same number. In this case, you would say equals STD. This is a sample, so dot S. Again, hold and drag your data. So I'm going to grab this data here. And there you are, hit enter. And it should match my 0.29197. And there it is. Now variance, you could do the same thing. So um, I'm going to do this twice. But the first time I do it, I'm going to tell you that this is nothing more than this number raised to the second power. And so you see it right here, the 0 0.085246. But let's say you didn't know that and you wanted to do this this way, then you would do var.s. And it's the same thing. You grab the data, hold, drag. There you go. Boom. Same answer. Okay. Now I have more information. I have the kurtosis. I have the skew. A little bit more. They just want the minimum. You literally would do equals min. Double click. Hold and drag. I like to show the different ways you can do this. So that's your minimum. If you notice, it is sum summarized. Uh, this actually, if I bring it in one unit, you'll notice you have the same answer. Maximum, same thing, equals max. Double click on max, highlight your data, and the same thing's gonna happen. There you go. And so, 3.24. Again, if I close this one unit, I will get 3.24. If I took that 3.24 and instead opened it, it would be back to the original that I had. So that's just playing with the values. Now the range. If I do equals R, you'll notice that range is not an option, but it is simply the maximum minus the minimum. So you should have uh, a range of 5.127, and that's just is what it is. Again, I feel that you get a lot more with this, so just FYI. You do have a confidence uh, interval. They haven't even asked you for that yet because we haven't even covered it, confidence intervals, but I do want to show you a little trick of the trade. Um, the lower confidence level versus the upper confidence level. The lower confidence level is simply the mean minus this number. The upper confidence level is simply equal to the e equal to the mean plus this number. And if I were to add those two extremes, so I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to say that this equals parentheses, this number plus this number, close parentheses, divide by 2. Look at what I get. Notice that this value is the same as this value, which is the average. So you can get the average. This is, this is just telling me that if I'm looking at the data, I would expect the data to fall between these two values, right? Um, the margin of error, which is something that's the same on both sides. So for example, this would equal the mean minus the lower on this side, this would equal the lower value minus the mean. And you notice that these are both the same answer. That's the margin of error, which is what this reports. <clears throat> Notice I have the 51 data sets, and, well, everything else is there for you. Okay, let me see something real quick. So, you remember when I did this number, I did this number minus, it should have been plus, because the double negative becomes a plus. So I'm going to say this is equal to this number, um... That number plus, because it's already subtracting it, that's what the issue is. You should get 1.351. So you see our range actually is the same as this. 
All right. Okay, so now let's talk about histograms. I'm actually going to um, take a look here. Let me see if I do this online. Better yet, let's let's see. There is an option, I think. Yeah, right there, histogram, boom. Where I can actually input the values here. So I'll grab and drag. All right, and so that's that. My bin range. This is the part that always drives me a little crazy. We do need an output, that's for sure. I need a chart output. Let's put the, the diagram, if we can, here. All right, and then the bin range. The problem with the bin range is it depends on how how many values we can actually use for the bin range and how many classes, if it makes sense, etc. So let's do this instead. Let's go to, actually, let me get out of here. I'm going to cancel that for just one second. Um, I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to histogram. See, that's what I want as far as the table. But before I do that, I have to grab the data. I always forget that part. So let's hold and drag the data. <clears throat> and we're going to go back to insert. Let's go to the histogram. There's my histogram. Here's the issue. I don't like the way this looks. I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to make it so that we have five classes. So I'm going to change the number of bins. And I believe it's access titles. And then this gives you an opportunity to fill in the bin. If not, it's under access. I'm sorry, I don't do this very often. So I have to remind myself. So yes, here it is. The number of bins. I currently have five. I think actually that's not bad. Um, let's open it up to say six. Notice that I have one, two, three, four, five. If I apply six, I could also change the bin width. I like that better too. I like this better. So now I have six uh, six bins with a smaller bin width. You can also notice how I'm going to change the coloring. So let's fill. Let's fill that with yellow, make it stick out. And you could change different colors. I mean, right now I have, um, you know, pretty light color transparency is what they call it. If I cl uh, click here, that is definitely going to give me a solid blue. I'll leave that alone. Let's change this to a green. I'm going to change this to perhaps a red, maybe an orange. Let's change this to a black or purple or a darker blue. And change that to a red so you can play with the colors you know and this would be um, a way to change the titles you could change the titles here so you can say this is a histogram of gas prices There you go. You can change the access titles or remove them all together. You have that option as well, which I would remove them if I were you. And so there you go. Those are your, or oh, there's your histogram. That's one of many ways you can make the histogram. So if you notice here, I have my number of classes is six. Now by bin width, for for you to determine the bin width, notice that this is going from, okay, so this is going from 1.89 to 2.11, not inclusive. 
from 2.11 since it's not inclusive to 2.34 not inclusive starting with 2.34 inclusive to 2.56 starting again at 2.56 ending at 2.79 starting again at 2.79 ending at uh, 3.01 and then starting at 3.01 all the way to 3.24 so in this case uh, it looks like my class width is basically if you look at the differences it's as easy as taking the 2.11 and taking away the 1.89 and they should all have sorry about that equals 2.11 minus 1.89 so there's about a 0.22 difference between the values that's your class width and that should be consistent all the way down now that's assuming <coughs> that we don't have any other values that are existent here so let me see Oh, it looks pretty pretty consistent so yeah and so if I do the same thing here from here to here and so on it should be a distance of about 0.22 wonderful all right so you have everything you need here um, I am gonna talk to you a little bit in another video about how to determine the class width and the number of classes, but that'll be a, an entirely different video. And I will upload that so you have it for your own um, edification. So that's your video. I hope this helps you with your homework. Best of luck.